Hey everybody, this is Larry with Leading Edge and today we're going to go over um, something that is we're very excited to announce and that is the release of our lead controller. This has been a long time in development, I think a little more than a year and a half and what it does is it just adds total functionality to running the machine as well as what you see here on the screen is more representative of what you'd find in a real world environment and that's what we're after here. We're after the authenticity of standing in front of a CNC machine. Our machines might be small smaller but they're not any different than a large machine the only difference is in uh, size so what we want to do is we wanted to build in something that would represent more of what you're gonna see when you stand in front of a, a large machine up here in the front I'm gonna go over a couple of different things here right now we're running in lathe mode so what you'll see is the y-axis is grayed out and the mill mode looks exactly like this only all of these are white so um, and they change between work coordinate system and machine coordinate system uh, we're not going to show a machine on here you're going to hear some movements going around but that's just so i can show you how to use the buttons and everything on the right hand side let's just start where we are here on the uh, on the interface we're going to go up over through the menu you have your um, traditional toolbar up at the top you have your xyz coordinates work coordinate system machine coordinate system with just a toggle button our logo, you know, we can't, shameless plug here, we always want to have our logo showing, so we've got that. We've got our current uh, status, which is idle, uh, and to kind of show you, um, if we were to open up the door here, that's going to tell us that the door's open. All we have to do is just pop that open. In order to get it to um, resume, we click on the resume button, and uh, we're back to idle again. Um, what I'm going to do here in just a second is, is we're going to disconnect and then we're going to connect and I'm going to show you exactly how to do uh, a startup here. Uh, on the, in the center screen you have up at the very top would be the current line of code that's executing. Just below that you have the, um, the displayed G code program which we'll throw one in here in a minute. Over on the right hand side you have all of the current active modes that are going on. So right now we have, we're in incremental mode, uh, we're in uh, uh, units per minute instead of you know per, per revolution or other unit. We're in inch units using G54 work offset, spindle is off, coolant is off, we're active plane on the XY um, and we'll change that over to XZ here in just a second because uh, we are running a lathe. We're, our maximum spindle speed is set to 2500 RPM. Our feed rate is zero because we're not moving and the same thing as our spindle RPM, we have zero. Our current tool that's active is tool number two. So down just below that, we've got some overrides. As the machine's running, you have total control over your spindle, your rapid rates, and your feed rates. So now you can do that and that's all in real time. So as the program's running, you can adjust these using coarse or um, fine movements. Uh, and we'll get into doing that as well. Just below the program contents menu, you're gonna see unlock, reset, hold, start, check, run line, and home. Uh, when we first start up the machine, it's gonna remind you to do a home, and that is so that the machine knows exactly where it's at. We don't, you know, you could have left it anywhere the day before when you shut down, and now we wanna tell it to go home so that it knows exactly where it's at and we can start running repeatable parts. Uh, run line means we're gonna run from our existing line or maybe run from a line that we pick. Uh, check is when we, when we activate check it's going to run through the entire code that you just loaded up and make sure that there's no issues before you start running the file and maybe get halfway through and realize that there's an incompatible G line code or, or something along those lines incorrect incorrect parameter start self-explanatory that's to start the program that you once you load it up here hold is to maybe you have to adjust something you know a coolant line or check on something maybe pull a bird's nest off that it you know collected on a tool or something uh, reset would be after you do hold you could activate reset but also when the door opens as we just showed uh, you'd need to hit reset so then that way we can um, or actually that goes to resume it's and start it used to be reset but reset would be um, maybe you crash your machine and you want to go home that's that's where both of those if you did hold it would say resume just like that and then uh, also if we hit the door pop the door open reset is actually a reset so after you crash the machine or something unlock this one here is um, can be dangerous so just be aware of it when you hit unlock it basically turns off all alarms at this point it's advisable to when you click unlock hit reset and home the machine 
Just get in the habit of doing those three commands together. Don't do one or the other without, because the problem that happens is once you do unlock, it turns off all the alarms and it's easy for you to overrun one of the limit switches um, and you can actually break the machine. This is just like a full-size CNC machine in that aspect. If you turn off the alarms, it's going to overrun or it can overrun and, uh, and you can do damage. Uh, the bonus point to this is all of our machines can be disassembled in about 45 minutes and everything can be fixed in about the same amount of time. So uh, don't be paranoid. You're going to crash a machine. Just try to eliminate your chances of doing it. So now that we've gone over the front uh, machine here, or the front uh, control panel, why don't we go ahead, we're going to disconnect and I'm going to show you what happens when you connect. From the from the machine so now we're disconnected I'm gonna unplug my machine I'm gonna plug it back in and you hear the dun 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 you know the typical Windows thing that goes on we're gonna go up to our tools menu and we're gonna say connect it's gonna automatically search for the active com port for our controller and it's gonna highlight it here so we're just gonna select com 9 it's gonna tell you you are connected and remember to perform a cold start cold start is that Thing I was telling you about earlier that um, it homes the machine and lets you know where zero zero machine coordinate zero zero is and what that is the most positive limit of X and Z on the lathe on the mill it's X Y and Z the most positive limit or on that and you'll see there's an active alarm status it's basically telling you hey you got to home the machine so let's come down here we're gonna click the home button and you'll hear some noise in the background that's uh, homing our lathe Okay, so now that we've got that active here, we're at machine coordinate zero, zero. That's our home position. Uh, our active tool still is tool two, and uh, we're all set. Reset um, comes down here. We don't need to hit reset. We've just homed the machine, so we could reset. We could redo that, and, and we're good here. Um, our active status is idle, so we're good to go. Uh, let's go, and we're going to talk about the file tools, all of these submenus up here. So clicking on the file menu gives you a couple of different options. You can load a file or you can exit. That's pretty much it. Uh, there is no save feature because your save feature happens in the program that you write your programs in. Uh, going to the tools menu, we have disconnect that, dis that either connects or disconnects the communications protocol through our, to our machine through USB. Settings allows you to go through and adjust all the settings. This is password protected, so you need to get either an administrator to assign you a password or you have to have an administrator come and change the settings. This is incredibly powerful. This machine is incredibly powerful and the reason behind it is so powerful is the are these settings here. We have plenty of settings where we can control everything from the motors, how fast the machine can run, tolerances of deviation points, arc tolerances, uh, whether we're reporting in inches or metric, um, and there's just a whole feast of things here. We actually have a manual, or yeah, there's a manual you can download that goes over all of the settings here, so I'm not gonna go over each individual setting. Just know that this is where you find them. Uh, once, you, once you click out of here, if you come in and you modify any value, like if I were to come up here and say RPM max is 2200, once I hit enter, that now gets written into the computer, and when I close this, this um, window, it automatically saves on, on exit. So um, now that we've got that, let's just kind of go over a couple of just some miscellaneous things. You can see the active version of Garble that we're using here. We're using a Garble version uh, with some of our own code uh, fork into it. So, um, you know, this is displaying the current version of there. Do not, do not, do not try to upload a different version of Garble to work with our machines. It won't. So make sure you're using our version of Garble and not another version that you downloaded off the internet. Uh, we've had where uh, teachers try to update the latest, greatest version of whatever's out there and it actually doesn't work with our software. We specifically built in a couple of things in here that are more meant for safety of the student and not to handicap you. We promise that as soon as there's an update, we'll give you an update, we'll shoot you an email, and you'll be able to upload the program. Uh, but don't try to, up to upload it on your own. It just is gonna cause more, more problems than not. Uh, there is a log file that is attached to this, so anytime there is a change made, we know. So the very first thing that'll happen, anytime you call us, and are having issues with your machine, the first thing we're gonna tell you to do is download that log file and email it to us. And it'll tell us everything from who changed the last 
settings on here and you will know because it's all password protected uh, to what was changed. So now we'll know exactly what's happening. And uh, this is by no means, it doesn't have any personal information on it or anything like that. We can't track you, but it's it'll tell us who was doing the settings and what could potentially lead to an error here. That's if it happens. We usually don't have that very often. So uh, just remember, this is where you can come in. You can change things. Our spindle maximum, we're going to change back to 2,500. When we exit, this 2,200 will go back to 2,500. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and close this window here. Now we're going to go back up to the tools menu and you're going to see fixture offset. We're not actually going to use much of this. This is for setting. Well, actually, we do use this. This is for setting the tool lathe uh, or the lathe tools. And you can see you can run several dozen tools on here if you wanted to using a quick change tool post. So um, using a quick change tool post, you just set your tool in and uh, you can follow our tool setting video that's uh, linked in, uh, in the description below. So uh, follow that. I'm not going to go over anything other than you are able to put in offsets for tools. You are able to put in the diameter and uh, it works very much like a large machine. So I'm going to close this window down here open up the tools menu one last time and at the bottom you're going to see tool offsets. This is where you can put a descriptive name for your tool. You're going to see where the zero point for that particular tool is based on the current work piece that you've got in there. And, uh, and now you can use this to help troubleshoot if you have anything or actually just fill it full of tools and, uh, and you know, run parts. The next menu is self-explanatory. It's the jogging menu. This is available by doing either coming up to the, the, the table or the menu drop down here and clicking open jog window or clicking control J. Right now we're just going to select it since we're already up here. You'll see the fixture offsets window come open. And uh, the first thing you'll notice is with the, with the mill, the, um, these correspond with um, the layout for your up, down, left, right arrow keys. Uh, we did that just because it's so much easier than having to go um, to reach up and do page up, page down to do the Z axis. On the mill, page up, page down is, is Z up, down, uh, and then the arrow keys are left, right are X axis, and the up, down are Y axis. So just remember that this will change depending on whether you're using a mill or a lathe. Uh, in order to change the distance, all of the distance are in, in basically base 10. Uh, this is exactly like using a large machine. You have 1,000 times, um, 100 times, oh, let me do this here, wrong button, <laughs> 100 times, 10 times, and 1 times movement here. And you just do that. You can increment either two ways. One, either selecting the radio button with your mouse button or using the multiply divide key. Divide moves us down into smaller increments, multiply moves us into upper or larger increments. So it makes moving around and jogging uh, very quick and easy. Uh, one thing you'll see, it also has the fixture offsets table because many times you'll come straightly, straight from jogging into setting fixture offsets. So we decided to make this pretty handy right here. So you can click this, open it up, set your tool dimension or your tool offsets, close it down, and then go right back into the jog menu. One thing to remember is sometimes when you open up other windows, you will um, lose focus on the particular window. So just remember, if you do open up the fixture offsets menu and you close it and you try to do jogging and it doesn't work, it means that you probably clicked on the back screen here and it's no longer active. Just make sure you click on it and you'll see this light blue um, haze around the active folder or the active window. So I'm going to close this down here. You did see that when I hit the wrong button here, we moved, we hit the, uh, we went into an alarm status. It's because we were right at zero, zero, and I tried to move in X in the wrong direction. So it sounded the alarm told me that I overshot my axis. Unlock, reset, then home. Okay, yeah. So then I can just come do unlock, reset, and hit home. All right, so now let's go back up to the menu, drop down menu, manual data input. Uh, this one here you use, once again, you can use the shortcut t keys, which is control M, but this allows us to do things like, well, I want to turn on the spindle to say a uh, thousand RPM. I'll do S 1000 M three and hit enter. Now my spindle's spinning. You can hear it in the background. I can turn it off typing M five and now it's off. I can command my uh, machine to move anywhere I want to by typing in coordinates. So I can do G00, or actually let's make this, um, we're gonna do active G91, so we're in incremental mode. Say G00, 
z minus two. And that's gonna move us two inches negative from our current position. So you can see that you can use manual data just like you would in a large machine where you can just come in and if you wanna do some programming right on the fly, you can do it this way. I'm gonna close out this window here. In our help menu, we've got the user manual. If you click on this, it brings up the full user manual. I'm not gonna click it here because it takes a second to do it. Just know that you can click on the user manual. It brings up the entire user manual for the lathe and the mill. And uh, you can find everything you need in there. And uh, I highly encourage you, if you have any questions, uh, look here first, then look on our website for all of our videos because it'll probably step you through some of that stuff. And then if you have to, give us a call. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly load up a file and show you how it, it loads up in the window here. So at this point, we've got everything set, we're homed, uh, we're ready to go, and we're gonna, we can run the program from one of two ways. We can come down here, we can hit start. All I'm gonna do is hit start, and I'm gonna hold it, reset it, home it, and then I'm gonna run it from a line. Uh, this is just to show you how you can do it. There's no need to run a full program. Uh, so right now, we've got the program loaded up. I'm gonna hit start. And you can see it starts executing one line at a time down here. So we're not going to let it run down. I'm just going to hit hold. I'm going to do reset, which will turn off the spindle. I'm going to hit resume so that we can do home. It'll now home again. Once that's done, I'm going to come down where it says program start. And I'm going to click run from line or run line. And it'll start running from that particular line. So that's two different ways of how to run it. Pretty much that's everything that we've got here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit reset and resume and home it again. Um, and then uh, that ends the video. But really that covers everything in our new lead controller. I really hope it like you like it the way that we do. Um, and I think truly this is, once you start using this, you will never go back to Universal G-Code Sender. Uh, this is just so much more functional. It's just like standing in front of a real machine. Uh, it just makes it more of an experience for the user. So um, please don't forget to click like, subscribe below, and uh, click that alarm button so you can get all of our updates on there. And if you have any questions, comments, please post them below because we, we work off of your ideas and suggestions. I can't tell you how many suggestions we've taken just this year to incorporate into both our machines as well as our controller. So uh, please make sure you're doing that, and I uh, look forward to seeing you on the next video.